Hello there. I am Tampa J. Thank you for joining me on this journey to Alcatraz Island. There is much ahead. participated in these 14 attempts. So some attempts involved just one guy, one prisoner. Other attempts would involve up to five. So depending on which attempt you're talking about. At the 13th escape attempt, there were four prisoners involved, but only three made it out. So it was Frank Morris, John Anglin, Clarence Anglin, and Alan West. So there were four prisoners involved. Now their plan was to make these dummy heads that resemble them sleeping and place those uh, the dummy heads on their beds at night. So when the officers were counting the prisoners sleeping, they were actually exploring the island, figuring out where to escape from. So Frank Morris. This is actually the location of the first lighthouse on the Pacific West Coast of the United States. This one was built in 1909, but the original one stood in the same location, built in 1854. Most people enter the main cell block through this front door, but I'm going to take you inside through the eyes of a prisoner. Here we go. While during some of San Francisco's harsh winters, this is one of the only views an inmate would receive right there. I can imagine this view right here is another view that a prisoner got used to here on Broadway which was the main drag down the main cell house. So here it is if you were doing time in Alcatraz this was your home I can imagine all the people who have touched these bars over the years and what they did to be behind them. Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers escaped through a vent just like that. And of course, I had to check the plumbing. And there was no running water, by the way. So, for their exercise, you have the wreck yard. Out there, that grass to the right was a baseball diamond. In front of it, a horseshoe. No, I'm sorry, shuffleboard. To the left, I think, were horseshoes. But I can't imagine giving a prisoner a steel horseshoe. Hmm. Maybe not. During the winter, they didn't spend much time out here, obviously. Very cold Pacific wind. You may also remember parts of Alcatraz from the movie Escape from Alcatraz from 1979 starring Clint Eastwood. It's a good story of the Frank Morris escape. And here's the shower room. Man, that would have been awkward, wouldn't it? If you had to go too. Wow. The warden had a nice view and great thing to drink there. This is the administration building, the front part of the main cell block. There's the main guard station on the left. And this part of the wall, thousands have touched for years and the paint has slowly changed into a handprint. Now, notice that area on the left right there. Quick glimpse at it, remember it. Just a second. I'm entering the main cell house again. I'm about to come back around. So if you were planning to visit a prisoner in Alcatraz, he would speak to you right here. And you would speak to him right there. That was the area that I was speaking of.
This is the library. This is where Frank Morris would find a popular mechanics magazine that showed him how to make rafts and life vests out of common household materials, which would indeed help them escape. So, in a way, I guess you could blame it on that magazine. Now we're at the mess hall, where the prisoners were fed three squares a day. And by the pictures in the movie Escape from Alcatraz, not much has changed here. Just missing some tables. Even the prisoners cooked behind bars with a guard. And that food right there is fake. Al Capone served some time here, as you know. But did you know he did laundry and mop floors? And also, played the banjo. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Al Capone played the banjo. So my wife and I were surprised to meet this man, George Devizinzi, a former correctional officer here at Alcatraz. He wrote a book, Murders of Alcatraz, and we were able to talk to him and get the book signed and learn some cool stories. He said on his first day, he started at 9 a.m., and by 9.15, he already witnessed a murder but also, he told us that he played checkers with the Birdman himself, Robert Stroud. And only him and Burt Lancaster, who played him in the movie Birdman of Alcatraz, were the only two people to actually have conversations with him. thought that was very cool. In 1969, a group of 69 Native Americans secretly landed at Alcatraz Island. The Laramie Treaty of 1868 stated that any Lakota Indian or Native American could occupy any abandoned government territory. And so for their Native American rights protest, Alcatraz Island was the perfect home but sadly due to a lack of participation, a tragic death, a fire, and the fact that San Francisco cut the power to the island, the United States government would move the last 15 people of the protests off the island in 1971. This island has sure seen a lot of history and I was so happy that I finally got a step upon it and learned things I never had known or never would have known if I hadn't got here. And I'm glad I was able to share some things with you. First, this was just a giant rock in the middle of San Francisco Bay. Second, they put a light tower on it. Third, an army fort. Fifth, a military prison, six, a federal penitentiary, and seventh, a peaceful rock of protest. Yeah.